Hello everyone, I am Tasta, and today, of course, we are going to be going over the Sunken Fleet faction, which was just added to the game. We're also going to be doing a few other things uh, really quick on this video, one of them being opening around 20,000 shards, as some people requested that I actually show opening all of them, as well as just kind of going over some other things, like how to level up the horde, because normally I do this off stream or even off video or, both, you know, off of both, so I did just want to show it real quick, just to kind of show the process and uh, how much gold it actually costs, because it's pretty pricey. But first things first, let's go over and uh, just get the shards so that we can get one copy of every troop so that we can go over them really quick. It shouldn't take too many. As you can see, we already got two of the other ones. The epic we already got is from the packs. And we should get the legends within, well, that would have been the legend if it wasn't the treasure right there. But uh, we should be able to get the legend. Uh, there we go. I'm going to get two at once within about a thousand or so. So uh, there's that. So now we can show everything with it. But we'll open all the rest of those in a moment. But of course, yes, Sunken Fleet. It has the exact same coloration, oddly enough, as the Fang Moor. So anything that you would use in Fang Moor, you would use in the Sunken Fleet, as it is a blue-red faction, just with minus uh, green on it, instead of minus uh, brown, I believe Fang Moor was. But anyways, let's go into the actual events page over here. Uh, of course, this lasts for the entire weekend. You get three battles today, tomorrow, and then uh, Sunday. And of course, you can just buy all the uh, shop tier packs to get even more. Uh, it is generally advised on these newer ones because of the uh, new packs and just the fact that it's a newer faction uh, just to use the potions and everything to get this to uh, level 500 pure faction. Obviously, you don't necessarily have to do that, but I ended up buying one of all pack and that should be enough to get there. I'm actually not 100% certain if that's enough schedules, but we'll find out. Anyways, it has the same rewards as it normally does, just with the, you know, the normal por or the portrait over there and the uh, little title all the way at the end, so you can get those in the future. As far as the layout of this stove, it has uh, three different tier 5 rooms, which is uh, a little bit interesting. Uh, more often than not, the order will be uh, do the first room, uh, do all three of the tier 5s, unless there's like a 1.2 or something here. You would normally go just all the way down and do all three of those. And then you would have to figure out between these four which one is worth it. Of course, there is a two room blocking this four. However, that four could be a, a, a higher multiplier, uh, especially with that new 1.4 times four room. It could potentially be that, making it viable to actually go down that path. But uh, more often than not, it's most likely going to be first five, 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 that four. Uh, then you double check the value between that and this area. And you go take out the boss. And for the most part, that is going to be the way you go. And you might even just take both of these every single time. As I believe this is a guaranteed treasure room in the corner. I'm not actually 100% certain if any of the other ones are treasure rooms. As far as this uh, delve overall for loot, it's not horrible for loot. However, I would say that Silver Necropolis is still higher. Because of the higher amount of, uh, the greatly higher amount of guarantee treasure rooms and just treasure rooms in general that it has. So if you've been sticking with several Necropolis, definitely still keep uh, staying with it. However, it's not a horrible delve, but uh, I would still even place Warren probably as higher uh, value just because of the three Arcanes that it has relative to this one. But with all the tier fives, it, sh it should have one of the highest multipliers potentially of any delves. It just if it only has that one treasure room, it is a little bit lower on loot. And even if it has like one and a half, it's still a little bit lower than some other ones that have one and two halves or two and two halves like Silver Necropolis has. But uh, anyways, that's pretty much everything the same for uh, this event. Uh, it does bring in a really good legend, however, which we just ended up opening there. Also, why did the game just freeze on us? Game, what are you doing? There we go. Uh, but there is a pretty good legend that is so noteworthy that I actually do need to mention him specifically. Normally, I don't mention any of the troops uh, actually out of uh, place by name. But this thing is just so decent that, uh, let's see, Sunken Fleet. So, of course, these are the options that we have. But Sunken Fleet is so good that we could use it now for things like this. It is the first faction troop to ever have 50% to all the type. It gives all elementals in the game 50% starting mana, which is a lot of pretty good troops. And some of those pretty good troops are, of course, what I mentioned in the past, uh, things like Obsidious. So now we have four times stun into four times curse. This troop is not only a 50% mana start, but also the first four times curse option that has been added to Gems of Four. And on top of all that, it even has a convert onto uh, green Doom Skulls, uh, or, you know, convert all greens to Doom Skulls, which could technically backfire since more often than not, you're probably using it for its curse or for its half mana or for both. But um, still has a bit of skull spam on it, has that really needed curse, and has the half mana start 
all three elements of which are haha -ha element get it haha -ha. but uh it's a pretty good synergy and it's going to be a really really solid legend and one of the absolute best legends that has come through faction and this is one of the better teams that you could end up using with it unfortunately still no elemental hero class however you can use things like uh not that uh you can use things like titan's final perk which gives all elementals one magic at the uh, every cast, which won't necessarily help that troop itself, but of course the things that it feeds half mana to, like Obsidious, Furnace, Sunbird, and others, uh, that uh, magic would end up giving a benefit to. Also, while here, Pure Faction for this place. You're pretty much just going to run one of both. Uh, the Pure Faction that's actually ran specifically for the... Uh, wait, which one did I miss? Uh, for the event, I believe, is something like this. And that is pretty much what you would also run as a player. Um, because you'd want to cover every mana, and that's every mana except for green, which is impossible to cover, so you just have the banner do that. Uh, alternatively, you could try doubling up on Mirage Queen. However, do keep in mind that the 50% start does not stack. If you have two of them, it'll still just be 50% start for all of them. Uh, this thing's mainly up front because it has a 30% scroll reduction, and assuming you have the potion, that will stack uh, multiplicitly with a 25% reduction, which will still be more overall reduction than any of the other ones would have. You could theoretically go with a double drowned sailor. The only problem is his death mark is not guaranteed that he has, uh, but he would have a double yellow to blue convert, which could potentially be okay. So if you wanted to go replace that, but I believe just going one of each in order to utilize the extra stats is probably the way to go this time around. It's very rare that you would actually use the normal four times pure faction or faction, but I feel like this would be one of those cases. And if not entirely, you'd probably just go with double drowned sailor and go from there as far as what method you could use. Uh, it's probably one that you'd want to tweak around a little bit, but more often than not, just kind of keeping in something like this order or doubling up on the uh, double drowned or doubling up on the legend is most likely going to be the way to go. Because keep in mind, the uh, legend also has uh, reduction uh, attached to it. So if you wanted to do it as the uh, skull mitigation as well, you could go down that route. But it would, of course, cover one whole less color. But since you're converting out that color, it isn't really going to matter much if you are or are not covering that. As far as some teams that are going through all of the non-pure faction, of course, uh, I'm just going to be showing more so just the basics as far as the meta. Of course, uh, Mountain Crusher, Apothecary, Double Gargoyle. We do have access to Apothecaries, and we do have access to Gargoyles. It is red, it is blue, and of course, you can use any color weapon. So something as simple as that would get you through the earlier levels. Of course, these are not the only methods you could use. Just some examples of stuff you could use. Of course, uh, right here, you can go with Tina there. You can go with Ketris and upgrade this to have more damage as you get to the mid-range battles. And uh, one pretty nice thing about this faction is um, you can either go Mang into Scroll Spam, but the meta is available. There's two different ways you can run this, of course. You can run Mountain Crusher, Apothecary, High King, Iron Gut with something else, or if you have Possessed King, put Possessed King there. Or, of course, you could just run what is absolute most meta uh, if you happen to own it, and that is Mountain Crusher, High King, Iron Gut, Zoo Goth, and Possessed King, which is pretty much auto-win everything uh, if you do happen to have this. Uh, even just having the Iron Gut combo in general, so you can, since you can just get Apothecary into it. But uh, yes, all these use blue and or red, so uh, you do have access to absolutely every single one of them for this faction, which should make it a pretty easy cakewalk, assuming you own at least High King Iron Gut, since at minimum Mountain Crusher or Apothecary High King Iron Gut with one safety support will be enough to win with. You won't be able to use something anymore, but there's plenty of supports under blue that you could use there if you don't end up having a Possessed King. So uh, that's pretty much everything with that. So let's go over two other things that I do want to just briefly uh, do. And uh, those were the main two things that were just basically requested onto this video. And that was to open... Oh, wow, we already got four. We got two back-to-back -back of the legend. But uh, that was mainly to go and open up all of our shards actually on a video. Because sometimes I do them off video. <laughs> but it is to see what kind of treasures we end up getting and all that good stuff. And um, we should definitely get them all maxed with how many shards we currently have. Ooh, sacred treasure. Exactly what we want to see. But uh, just trying to work these up. And all we need now is just one more copy for a legend. And after this, I'm just going to go over the treasure upgrading, because normally I almost never show the treasure upgrading uh, on a video, so I do just want to do it. Actually, I don't even think we... Have we ever even covered in a video? I don't need to do that in the future. Well, I guess we're doing it now. <laughs> it's not in a separate video, but good enough. We're doing it now. So I'll be doing that in about a minute once we get through all these shards, and once we get through all these little treasures here. Uh, of course, uh, the main thing that we're aiming for here are the uh, legendary treasures and mythic treasures. I, uh, I guess some epic treasures too. But those three treasures are about the only thing we really need. We're going to have every single troop maxed regardless. Uh, I think it only takes around 8,000 or so shards, give or take. So obviously doing uh, nearly 20,000, we should have way, way more than enough. And of course, all these shards were accumulated mostly just over the last uh, month or so. 
from doing daily delves as well as uh, just the Tuesday faction events that end up occurring every Tuesday, even on the weeks where there's a natural event, which is kind of weird because uh, whenever there's a class event, it overwrites the event, but whenever it's a uh, faction event, the Tuesday faction event, or, or I should say the Friday faction event, does not overwrite the Tuesday one. I guess it's because it would be back-to-back -back if they did a class event on Thursday and Friday, which is why they don't do it. But I always did find that kind of weird that there's always a faction event every Tuesday, even if there is one on the Friday. But hey, more shards and more free loot as the Tuesday events, and even this event in general is pretty free loot for the most part. This one's slightly less, though, because it does expand quite a bit further, and you do have to buy in, I believe, uh, several of the packs to actually complete it. Whereas, of course, doing the Tuesday event only costs, like, around 30 gems. So it ends up being a uh, lot easier. But we should have a pretty decent treasure hoard by the end of this. Obviously, I'm not concerned whatsoever if we're actually going to get these troops maxed. There's a 100% chance that by the time we stop clicking this 200 button, they will all be maxed. We need to go ascend them and actually put their traits in. Oh, wait, what just happened there? I just, like, quick-clicked it so quick. But we can't get that every single time. Let's see. Maybe if I click right here. Oh, no. There's no spot where you can just spam click it that you can just hold it the entire time. That's unfortunate. Let's see. No, there's no way you can spam click that. Actually, maybe if I did controller for it, but oh well. Too late on that. I don't have controller hooked up. Last time I tried doing it, it was acting all weird with it. So we're about halfway done with these shards here. So many shards. If I'm not mistaken, this is actually the most shards I've ever bothered opening in one single sitting. There are still some people that have tens of thousands of them. I haven't grind... Well, for one, I don't necessarily consistently do the factions every single day. And the other thing is... Um, there were a couple of months back then where I kind of skipped doing factions because why not? <laughs> factions do get a little bit repetitive after a little while if you're just farming them for the sake of farming them. But still, of course, still nice to get the exclusive shards. It's just it's the only real location where you can end up really getting shards, of course. Uh, there are like a few of the packs here or there where they might give you like a few of them. But for the most part, the only way to really obtain shards is actually doing uh, factions, of course. Uh, it's pretty much the, or it is literally the only exclusive reward, really, for doing uh, factions. I guess you could technically consider Legendary and Mythic Ingots to also be an exclusive reward, just because the rate at which you gain Legendary and Mythic Ingots from uh, Delves is greatly faster than any other method in the game by a very large margin. But still, they're not technically exclusive. And there we go, another Sacred Treasure. I'm actually not losing tr or keeping track, but I know we had two when we started. Hopefully we'll have like 12 or something. I highly doubt we'll have that many. Uh, we'll be lucky if we even reach 10 at this point. Uh, we're getting quite a bit of lamps. If not mistake, we started with, what, four lamps or so? Hey, another sacred treasure. We'll be able to tell from there about how many we have and then start using our treasure the proper way to go and upgrade our uh, treasure hoard there. I have another mythic. Very nice. Get our last several clicks. Also, why don't they have a 2,000 option? <laughs> Keys have a... Or a 50 option, I should say. Uh, keys have a open 1, open 10, and open 50 options. Why do portals not have this option? It would be very convenient right now, to say the least. That is for sure. Because they basically are like keys. They're kind of like seal keys, except instead of 20 seals, you use 20 uh, uh, shards. Same difference, just different. And they're basically like event keys that you can use at any time too, which is always pretty cool. Like, any faction troop that ever comes out that's good, like, of course, the Legend that came out, the Mirage Queen, uh, you can get this, as I mentioned, in, like, a thousand shards or less, so it's always really nice. You can just go to Hall of Guardians and throw down, like, 400, 600, get yourself, like, a Gargoyle or two and have that. That's pretty decent for, like, half the delves in the game for doing the low-level delves, as well as just a good early mid-game troop in general. Having Gargoyle, I've even been using it on my Nintendo Switch account still, uh, on some teams here or there, like, on Guild War Days and stuff, just because it is that viable. And another Sacred Treasure there. And we're almost done. <laughs> so many shards. And I guess we'll throw the last five one at a time since we're going to have like a hundred extra shards there or so. Not too big a deal. We clicked it this many times. Five more won't hurt. Yep, another sacred treasure. Oh, it looks like we did hit about a dozen, oddly enough. Well, that's pretty lucky. I'll take it. And then we can start upgrading this thing to level 200. Okay. That one more time. And we'll five more little small clicks here with one treasure each time. Ooh, double crown in a row with a useless troop. Another useless troop and another. Well, that's kind of useless. Anyways, okay. So next order of business. Upgrading treasure hoard. Oh, wow. We got a lot of lamps and a lot of sacred treasure. 
So, basically how you do these, uh, there's a couple different ways. Uh, generally, for the earlier ones, um, you would throw down coin purses up to about level 20. Then rings up to about level 50, though if you have a lot of gold, you can go to about 70. Uh, chalices you throw up to around level 100. Again, if you have a lot of gold, you can go to about 120, 125. And basically everything beyond that, you go into crowns. Crowns you do until about 150. And then from 150 plus, you want to make sure you mainly do lamps and sacred treasure. So I guess we'll do exactly that pattern. Uh, of course, I don't really need to use coin purses because we have so many gold rings. But for the sake of this, I will actually show it exactly as I just mentioned. So during coin purses, you generally do these for the really early ones. They are relatively useless treasures that you shouldn't really use. However, these early ones are just so uh, cheap for the most part. As you can see, it's only costing us about 12,000 gold or so there. That's not really too big a deal if we are throwing these down. And these you can throw down to, as I mentioned, about 20. Anything beyond 20, you're basically just wasting your gold at uh, that point. So we'll do this one more time. And uh, that's pretty much as far as you really want to bother with the coin purses. Otherwise, you are wasting gold. So next up, we're going to go move on to gold rings. This, as I mentioned, you do to approximately 50. Uh, of course, these are just approximations. Depending on your gold amount, you might want to wait even longer. Of course, if you're really early in the game and have almost no treasure, you pretty much always want to wait till you have 100% chances and only ever do it on 100% chances. You shouldn't be doing it like this. This is mainly just to use these specific resources gold efficiently when you're initially uh, upgrading all of these up. So, of course, as I mentioned, getting this up to uh, 50 now and then chalices will do up to about 100. Uh, crowns up to about uh, 150. And then the other two exclusively for pretty much everything post 150 at that point. So I'll keep throwing these down. And I forgot to keep track of the exact amount of gold, but you guys can see at the beginning of it, I believe we started at around 14,600, if I'm not mistaken. Somewhere around there, give or take a few hundred thousand. So it uh, looks like we're probably going to go down at least 5 million in upgrading this. It's because we don't have too many lamps or sacred treasures. It's a pretty hefty amount, but not enough to uh, get us all the way. And obviously, uh, at least at this current moment in time, I really hope they do add a feature for this in the future. But uh, as it currently stands, there is no way to upgrade your smaller treasure into bigger treasure. And keep in mind that ascending your treasure does not do anything at all. Uh, ascending them and trading them is completely pointless, so don't bother unless you just want to do it for daily achievements. It will not give you any extra benefit onto actually upgrading these, so uh, do keep that in mind. Their EXP and their uh, percent will always be the same regardless of what their rarity is or anything like that. But yeah, there's no way to upgrade these smaller ones into bigger ones. If they ever added the ability to do that, you'd basically be able to convert souls into saving gold for this. And it would encourage people to actually upgrade a little bit further and would make factions easier. Not sure if that's going to be their quote-unquote faction fix if they ever do end up getting around to that. But uh, I really hope they do end up doing that because, as you can see, we have a lot of really small resources that aren't really desirable to be using because of how much gold they end up uh, sucking up compared to using the bottom three. Ideally, if they ever added an upgrade method, you would only ever want to use the bottom three rarity treasures, and you'd basically never use these three, at least from a late game and end game perspective. Oh, we'll keep throwing these down. It does take a little while to actually get all these upgrades in, of course. And, of course, a lot of gold as well. This is probably burns through the most amount of gold, more so than anything in a uh, late game. Depending on your guild requirement, if you're doing this, this could even burn through more than you even spend on your guild in a month. Uh, it is, of course, the biggest gold sink that really is in late game. Uh, not really counting your um, uh, not really counting your uh, normal uh, guild uh, tasks and everything like that. But as far as something that doesn't have, that's basically just for your own account. Probably the biggest gold sink that's even in the game is whenever a new faction comes out, just having to get it to around uh, level 100. And cost anywhere from about a million to a million and a half or even two million depending on what method you're using obviously we're doing a slightly more expensive method by trying to do all these first and uh, it's going to be even more once we start getting to the bigger treasures obviously if we only exclusively did these bigger treasures which you can do if you want to if we only use these bigger treasures to get it to level 100 that would have only cost us uh, probably under 500,000. however even though it only cost us that much um it would cost us more to do anything post 100 since um, obviously we do not want to use these smaller treasures for post 100. But I'll go to the exact uh, bounds I ended up mentioning. So we'll go and do this all the way to uh, 100. And then we'll basically use every crown we have, and every lamp we have, and all the sacred treasures, at least up to 200. I think uh, we might be doing a little bit over at this point. Uh, like we probably might not end up needing all the sacred treasure, but hey, 
That's more for the next faction that will save us money into the future, or gold, I should say. But now, as I mentioned, once we reach about 100, we want to go throw down every crowns. Crowns you throw to about 150 until they start losing their effectiveness, just like everything else eventually does. However, if you have the gold, you can pretty much just keep going with crowns forever. These bottom three, you could do at basically any uh, value of delve, but you generally want to save them for post 100, as uh, if you are planning to uh, get this up, it's just better, cheaper to do so at this point. But it's not a necessity, of course. Well, we'll keep throwing these down, then we'll go into the really big ones, and then it should just burst up as far as its level. And we should be able to reach 200. That'd be a little bit weird if we can't get it. I believe we're at the point where we should be able to get every single new faction that ever comes up to 200. And you, there's two reasons why I'm doing this, even though it's pretty pricey on gold. One is it will overall save us quite a bit of time uh, in the scheme of things, just because of all the time that we'll spend on the faction events as well as trying to get level 500 pure faction. And the other one, of course, is just to make level 500 pure faction easier. Uh, you don't necessarily need level 200 for this, just with potions alone with level 100 is enough. However, this does make it a lot uh, easier to do, so might as well. Plus, in the long run, I do want to try getting every single faction to 200, just because it makes Tuesday events permanently easier, uh, since it'll basically be double those stats that we would normally have. So right here, it looks like we will not have enough crowns in order to reach uh, level 150, but that is perfectly fine. Let's see. we another five there. We're going to throw down every crown. I should probably keep at least one crown so we don't have literally zero. Oh, no. Actually, you know what? We'll go down to zero on this. And, uh, yeah, we'll just go all the way to zero. But anyways, as I mentioned, crowns to 150. So they start losing effectiveness. and Or they don't specifically start losing effectiveness, but, you know, uh, it costs more gold. <laughs> it's constantly costing more gold, so you generally want to use the bigger resources the further you go. But as you can see, it's now bursting up quite a bit. We'll burst up even more once we do even double that effect once we hit Sacred Treasure. I think we'll have one Genie Lamp left. That'll be fine. And can we even reach 200? That's in question. We should be able to. Three sets of Sacred Treasure seems like it will. If we just click that real quick just to see, we can preemptively see it. And yeah, that looks like it should. But we'll find out in a moment. And Genie Lamps technically are only effective, I guess, up to 200 in theory. But anything post 200 is fine use it for though generally you don't really bother going beyond 200 for most factions it starts getting extremely expensive uh of course the further you go i don't think a single person has bothered to get a, a faction to uh, uh oh no it looks like yeah we're gonna way 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 overshot it wow <laughs> well we're gonna have a lot of sacred treasure for the next time around but uh let's try doing this a little bit strategically it doesn't matter if we own every troop in the game we'll go we already got rid of crowns might as well get rid of the lamp too and I'm going to have to waste a little bit here. I guess we'll throw a ring down. <laughs> it's a really weird way to end it, but okay, we'll do it that way. And hey, it looks like it didn't actually cost us that much this time around. It looks like it cost us around, what, four and a half million? Or four million even? That wasn't too, too bad. And yeah, that is what upgrading these uh, factions ended up looking like. And we'll just do that right there. And that is exactly right on the dot 200. And I'm probably not bothering to get it any further than that. So, um, yeah, there we go. And we have a bunch of sacred treasures that we'll save for when a new faction comes around in one month from now, as we do seem to get one pretty consistently about once a month these days. Anyways, guys, if you still have any other questions about the factions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. I will be streaming it quite a bit this weekend, obviously today. As soon as this video goes up, I'll probably already be streaming. So if you're watching this as soon as it goes up, uh, go check out the stream. We'll also be doing it this weekend. Uh, I'll be doing it tomorrow around 10 a.m. Uh, to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we stream every night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and of course uh, today and tomorrow we'll be mainly messing around with doing the faction and getting it completed. And by uh, Sunday we should definitely have uh, level 500 pure faction completed. Anyways guys, just leave any other comments you have below. Thank you so much for watching, and best of luck with the new faction. Goodbye everyone!